Hey guys, welcome back or to the YouTube channel. So as you saw by the title, this is a little get ready with me. I don't think I've ever done a video like this, so hopefully this turns out right. I'm not gonna be showing you guys like my whole rundown because I've shown that in other vlogs. Make sure you go watch my most recent vlog, but I'm going to be showing you guys me taking down my hair and kind of just feeling a little bit better about myself before I have to go to work today, which is what I'm getting ready for. So I'm not gonna be going all out. I'm not going to a fancy dinner or anything like that. I'm just going to work, but I want to feel good as well. So let's get into the video. So when I'm taking out my twists, which I feel look very janky this time, I did not like how they turned out, but also I was doing them kind of like late at night, last minute as well. But I mean, they're a protective style. I didn't look crazy. People still said I look good because I do look good, but it's whatever. So when I'm taking them out, I like to spray them down first with my mixtures of oil and water. There's a few different things in there. I'm not going to tell each one but if you message me on instagram which is angel kyle i'll be able to tell you about it i use that and then i just have a little baggie right here where i put all my rubber bands back into because what do i look like buying new ones every single time i get a fresh retwist and get a style along with it i just save them unless they break i usually start from back to front i'll try to section out my hair and usually i'll just section out like two different sides i don't even do all like the four sections or anything like that it's not that serious but i will say that i'll like always take out my hair and then like two weeks later i'll find one random twist that i never took out which i guess maybe i should separate it better but whatever so along with this video i thought i would maybe give you guys a little bit of like a life update because i haven't really been recording videos or anything like that i don't think i uploaded any videos this summer which is crazy it's kind of sad i mean i don't think i did anything too crazy this summer to even record i mean i guess i always could record i'm recording my classes which are so boring i could record something this summer but i just kind of chose not to and Moving on to the first topic, it was because I was so focused on getting a car, which I ended up getting. You'll see that in my last vlog. But I feel like that was my greatest like achievement, kind of going into adulthood. Kind of just made me like feel like, it kind of like solidified it. Like I'm really old enough to buy a car, own a car, be on my own insurance, drive around at my own will, not have to have like, not have to wait on my parents or anybody else to give me a ride. That I'm really like growing up. And I know I'm not grown or whatever, but it's definitely like pushing me forward and I can get to bigger and better places. And it also opens up a lot more opportunities. It's kind of like crazy because I always thought that I would be getting like, if I got a car, at least my first car, I would share it with my, my sister because we're twins and everything. And maybe like, it would just be easier financially and everything. And it would just be nice to share a car with somebody, like share that big responsibility. And I never really believed in myself that I could do it on my own, which is crazy because that's exactly what I'm doing now. And I feel like, I wouldn't really want to have it any other way. I bought an older car because it's it was cheaper and I didn't want to have to make payments on it. And like, since that car's already like established, people already know the issues with it, it would be easier if I brought it to like the shop and everything. And I feel like that was a good choice as a first car. Like I don't really like when people say they want their first car to be like something super brand new. Like obviously if it's like a 2015 and things like that, that's fine. But some people want like the latest car out there, but then they also have to realize that you're increasing your, oh, punch buggy. There's a possible chance you're increasing your car insurance which is like something that i didn't want to have to worry about because if you pay off your car that's one thing but car insurance is a monthly yearly whatever six month type of thing that you're forever gonna have to pay when you have a car at least legally i also had to factor that in like okay how much do i have to pay for my insurance each month and can i actually afford it so there are some people whose car insurance is six hundred dollars a month that is ridiculous that is crazy i've never heard of that being so high like i don't know what you had to do to get it that high but that is just crazy i just know that i wanted my insurance to I, my goal was to be under a hundred dollars which i know for like a young person you don't really hear about that as much unless you're under your parents insurance that's a lot like of what i was hearing when i was doing my research that you have to like like if you're young you should get on your parents insurance because if they have a good record because 
it'd probably be cheaper you get a hundred dollars or less or something like that and i was like dang well i already knew from the jump that i was getting on my own insurance so i'm kind of just like why did this get my same goal but doing it by myself so i've been licensed for about like three years never any accidents on my record or anything like that and i'm also a student I have to put that to my advantage and also let them know if you don't let them know these things then they can't really lower your quote or lower your insurance because they don't know that you're a student they don't know how long you've been licensed and stuff like that if you don't know yourself like these are things you have to communicate to your car insurance provider so that you're not paying for the most insurance out there but moving on like i was saying getting a car like opened up so many different opportunities not even just in like a professional like kind of like work life but also just like my personal life i'm able to go where i please i don't have to ask people to go grocery shopping i can go grocery shopping on my own will go out to eat go like wherever i want even if i want to just go for a late night drive or just go to a park and just sit down and like just drive there i can do it all myself which i absolutely love it's just like this like this freedom a new different type of freedom that you don't even realize that you have a car which is crazy and like I said like in terms of like professional and like work I was kind of stuck at the YMCA not that I didn't like working there but I, I was like this is kind of my, my only option yeah I could have worked at like restaurants around the area but I already knew I didn't want to do fast food or I guess quote unquote like um, customer service which every job I feel like we have to have some sort of customer service but like the YMCA is kind of just work, you're mostly dealing with the children and then your bosses kind of deal with the parents and so just about that I ended up like when I got my car that's immediately when I started going job searching so I ended up applying to Nike not that I really care but I got paid like 12 something at the YMCA which is like I always say to everybody just pocket change like slavery especially to be working with lives working with children I had to be CPR certified get all of these certifications for 12 dollars where I can go work at Chick-fil-a for 14 or whatever and have no qualifications like what like the YMCA is so cheap and for them to be like well it's because we're a nonprofit no, you're making a lot of profit. You just hide under the nonprofit organization. Like, come on. Anyway, I ended up searching at Nike. They like called me back basically immediately. H&M, Nike was hiring at 1560, which 12, 1560, I was like, no matter what job I wanted, I wanted to get a pay raise, obviously, along with it. And I was like, $15? And I get to work at the outlets, I get to work with clothing, get a discount, everything? That sounds really, really good. And so I was really gonna take that job. But then my friend was just like, I'm gonna check out care.com, see if I can stay working with children and just book gigs, gigs from there and everything. And I was like, you know what, maybe I should try it too. And one thing I didn't like, I was kind of being a little bit stingy, but it's also just like, you don't know if you're gonna get a job or not. You have to pay for like a background check or whatever, which I mean, I get, but I feel like, I don't know, if I haven't even booked a job yet, what makes you think I wanna pay like 15 14 dollars from the jump so but i ended up paying it because i was like you know what let me just take this risk which i'm happy i did because that's where i found my current job as a nanny and a personal assistant and that was paying well on care.com i made my minimum rate for reoccurring jobs for 16 dollars so i was just like okay I'll do care.com if they can pay me, if they can pay me more than what Nike's gonna pay me. So I was like, okay, let me just put my price 40 cents more, which I did. I was getting job opportunities, getting interviews and everything. So far, I didn't get any of them. I was interviewing for them and I wasn't getting any of them. And I was just like, dang. Okay, well, I guess if this doesn't work out, I still have time to respond to Nike. I also applied to H&M and Crocs, but they all got back to me after I got this nanny job. And they were like, I was like, dang, I really would have worked at the Crocs Center, like the Crocs outlet, like that would have made me so happy, like. But anyway, that's besides the point. So I ended up making my rate $16. I was not getting any hits. Like people were like saying like, we're interested with you, but then they would be like, oh, okay, well we find, found somebody else. And I was like, it's because I'm young. It's because they think I'm faking. Because I had like all the truth on there. I'm a college student. I worked at the YMCA, working in childcare for three years, CPR certified, all these different things. And I'm just like, bro, why are they like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was a like, young college student, but I was like, I had all the qualifications. Like, 
what else do you want from me? Like, <laughs> anyway, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but eventually I found this woman and she was paying, she was gonna pay me the rate that I wanted to. She was telling me about all these different things, their lives and everything. And just from the phone, I was like, oh, this lady has like some sort of money. Like she was talking about my kids play 15,000 instruments. We live in, near here. She sent me the address to go meet with them. I saw it was right beside the water. I was like, okay, from the jump, I already know that shit is expensive. So I'm just like, not that I was gonna go for the money, as long as she could pay me my rate, but I also was just like, I wouldn't mind living in a household that has more money just because it'd be probably be a better experience in terms of like cleanliness because that's a big fear to go into somebody's house and it's just dirty and you're just like oh my god how do I get out of this situation but I was just already thinking okay if you have money they're probably a little bit more clean she said that she had a housekeeper so I was like okay this sounds nice I started researching care.com and I was just afraid like is this too good to be true is this a scam like because we were saying like be careful when they ask you to meet in person because you don't know like they might be trying to do some some freaky stuff to you and I was like is this too good to be true but I have my location on with people so I was just like you know what let me just take the risk let me just go ahead and like if I get kidnapped I get kidnapped if something happens to me like at this point like whatever I told Brian beforehand, this is where I'm going. Like he has my location. Other people have my location. So I'm just like, okay, let me just go and see how this goes. So I ended up going and when I was like pulling up into the neighborhood, I was going deeper and deeper. It's the neighborhood. The houses were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like my parents have owned homes in the past and things like that, but never like this. I was just like, whoa, this is like, this is not what I was expecting. I expected like, oh, a two story house and stuff like that. But this was just like, yeah, like house on the water, owning boats, things like that nature. And I was just like, whoa, like this is crazy. And so I come in and long story short, I ended up getting the job. I actually got paid that night because I started watching the kids a little bit. So then we started texting a little bit more. She th said that she'd pay me 18 instead of 16. And I was like, to go from $12 at the YMCA, then to go to $15, like considering $15 and 60 cents at Nike to making my account for care.com saying I'm gonna get paid $16 to her offering $18. I was like, heck yeah. Duh. And I was just like, whoa, this is crazy. This is a crazy opportunity. What the heck is all happening before we get on campus? I'm just like, whoa, this is really good. Like going into the school year, new job, new dorm, new year, new classes, new money, big money. Like, <laughs> I was just like, especially with the car, like you don't know what's gonna happen. So you always need to be making money and putting it into savings just so you can have it just to have it, just in case. I don't have to worry about like the YMCA only getting paid like $200, $400 every two weeks or whatever and having to try to make sure I save some of that while also having money for myself and having car money and all these different things. I was just like, well that won't have to be much of a, much of a worry if I'm getting $18 and she wants me to work like 25 hours to 30 hours. You do the math, but I'm just like, that's good money. Like, especially for a college student and it's not like I'm having to break my back and work the fields for this money. It's just nannying, like we just work with kids. As long as the kids are not hellions, then I'll be good and they aren't or anything. But I'm just like, this is craziness. Like, what the heck? So that's a little up life update on my like job life and just kind of like a little update. I got a car, new job, and I'm really just kind of just coming up like I don't know I feel like God is really just like seeing what I've been through like the hardships and everything like that and it's kind of just like okay you're kind of reaping the benefits of kind of sticking with me and going through all this okay here's here's your reward for sticking it out and I feel like this is not even the end of it I already know there's gonna be more to come more opportunities more experiences for life like growth and all these different aspects I just gotta navigate it the right way it really just makes me feel motivated about like what's going on especially to go into like the fall semester and have a bad roommate two bad roommates even this year I'm gonna tell you guys a little story time about the roommate I have now or I used to have 
but just going from fall semester and having all that BS and everything and trouble with like family and things like that to where I am now, like I'm really just trying to keep like a more positive outlook on life and just being more a little bit like more optimistic instead of just being like, dang, everything sucks. Cause then that really goes to your head and then that's all you really think about and it's hard to stay positive after that. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me just start off being positive and see what goes from there. I already know how it is to be negative and it wasn't good. So let me just try being positive this time. And I feel like it's really just turning out right. I'm recording more YouTube videos. I'm feeling happy. I'm making more money. My job is also not like very like degrading. You know, like sometimes you get paid more, but the job is like degrading. And you're just like, I would not want anybody to see me at this job. Of course, you don't want anybody seeing you working in the first place. But if somebody saw me just taking care of kids as my job, like it's just like, okay, whatever. So on to the next topic. One thing I just want to say is because a lot of people have been saying this to me and I've had I've had this discussion a lot this week, but like this is, I'm just gonna generalize this statement for anybody who needs to hear it. You do not have to have anybody in your life that you don't want to, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's your mother, your father, whatever. If they are toxic to you, they leave you feeling drained, they leave you feeling degraded, they leave you feeling like you're a worse version of yourself. You do not need to have that person in your life. And I feel like in the black community, that's a big toxic thing because um, people will do like the most crazy, toxic, hurtful, disgusting things to you. Black families will just cover it up and be like, well, that's family. No, that's they wouldn't do something like that. Knowing damn well they would. And there's many, dis like, there's many examples I can give to you guys about other stories, my story and everything like that. And at the end of the day, certain people will just be like, well, they're family, like, you have to have them in your life. No, if you are toxic and you are not making me a better me, you gotta go. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you birthed me because you giving birth to me does not give you the right to abuse me, make me feel worse about myself or anything like that. And I'm tired of people like trying to tell me that just because like I'm not close to my family, not close to my tw my twin sister or anything like that. And every time, like, I know it's shocking to people, which I get the shock, like don't get me wrong because then I'd be like very oblivious and stupid to not think that people are gonna be shocked. But the minute they start saying like, oh, well you should get back close to her. And I tell them the reason why I'm not and they're just like, yeah, well, whatever, you still be close to her. They don't even consider what I say. It's kind of just like, okay, well then, now I know that you don't really care about my well-being. You just like the look of like two twins being super close, even when the other one might be toxic and doing worse for themselves. And I don't want to be dragged along into it. And maybe I'll talk about this story time another time, probably in like a few weeks, but like me and my sister, we don't talk like that. And we don't have a talk in a while. Tell me why recently I found, find out that, like I said, we are not talking, I've been talking in months. She got into the situation and I guess to drag, like she dragged me into it by lying and saying like, it's just, I can't even give you guys the context without giving this whole story, which I don't want to give the whole story right now. But I'm like, if we haven't talked in months and you put yourself into a, like a legal situation and you drag me into it, why would I want that person in my life? We don't talk at all, but yet, like when it's convenient to you, you add me into the story to just like, oh, well, I'm gonna drag her along in with me. Like, you know how people are just like, oh, well, if I'm going to hell, I'm dragging you with me or something like that. It was, she was basically like pulling a situation like that. And why would I want somebody like that in my life? People who, like I said, I tell them about the situation and they still just like, oh, well, whatever, whatever. F what you just said, be close with her. I'm just like, okay, well, you're not a true friend, clearly. And I don't want to talk to you anymore about the situation because you believe that no matter what, like if, if somebody does something toxic to you, if it sounds cute that you guys are together, then that's what you guys should do. You sound like an idiot and please stop talking to me. Like that, that's one thing that really pisses me off. Just because me and my sister are twins, people don't care about anything, anything that she might've done or anything like that my like family has done. You guys are so cute together. You guys look alike. You guys should be close. Should doesn't mean we have to. That doesn't, that's not like a direct rule or, or a situation that, oh, you have to be together if you guys are twins. No, we just happen to look alike. I didn't choose to look like this girl. Like 
why does that mean that I have to be bonded with her forever? Even if she's going to drive me into situations that are going to mess up my reputation and ruin my life. I don't want to say ruin my life, but like mess up certain times of my life because she's driving me into very like childish situations, which my sister is very childish and I don't like that my family kind of just like allows her to go with it. But when I try to be responsible and try to be older, it's just like, you're being grown. You don't need us anymore. And we don't like that and we don't want you to grow up you're still a little girl but since and they get mad about that but since my sister is very childish and kind of lets my parents still baby her and all these different things they love her and they protect her and they let her do whatever she wants even if it's very morally wrong oh well that's our baby she comes running to us after every situation so in that case it's okay we'll protect her and i don't want that energy around me that's just too much but yeah this is kind of turning into a little rant and this could probably t i could talk about this for hours just because i know like other people have felt the same way about like toxic families and people like kind of like gaslighting them look at my hair gaslighting them into staying in that situation if it is not healthy leave 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 and that's your psa for today okay so as you can see i'm on the other side of my hair i think this side is turning out really well i'm feeling like that girl i'm feeling a little bit better about my hair about how it's turning out how it looks because then that really brings my like entire face together because my hair is part of my identity to me at least and if it looks good then i look good and i feel good and all these different things my hair is healthier than ever like i've really done with i've, I've really had to be patient with my hair over the years because i've done a lot of damage to it in the past and i'm glad that my hair is healthy again that i'm maintaining that health that i don't have to worry about like my locks thinning or about it being dry or it being brittle or all these different things are falling off like i really just am glad and my hair is at a good health um i really want to dye it black again like fully black but i'm just like it's just gonna fade out again so maybe i might do it for october i don't know but i'm really feeling good about how like the health there's just like the health of my hair there's this one class science and i keep talking about this stupid class because first of all i'm not even a science major so why is this being like why is this the most annoying class it should be just like an easy filler class tell me why the, the school week starts on a monday and we have assignments due monday and tuesday why can't you just have assignments due on sunday like every other teacher why is there assignment due on the first day of the school week how am i supposed to read up on everything and then have a reading quiz do that same monday if we just started the class on monday do you guys think that's crazy that like the school week starts on a monday and we have assignments that are due that monday and tuesday so we only have a, like less than 24 hours to 24 hours to do the work and this like lady she just doesn't even seem like she likes the topic either she doesn't seem like she likes science herself she seems so bored she seems so like dead aside it's just like <sighs> Yeah, we got significant figures. Um, we have a test Friday. So if you're not here, then you're just gonna get a zero. I don't do any makeup. Um, like I said, any questions? No? Okay. Let's sign in the top hat. Let's put in this code. Like, oh my god, this class, bro. Ugh, this sucks. Like, why am I doing worse? Like, this is why I'm not a science major. If I wanted to be a science major, then I would do so science. And so, that, like, it kind of sucks that the classes that you're not even majoring in is the one that can lower your GPA. Yeah, that's why I didn't major in this topic, in this this category, whatever. This is the reason why. And then you're gonna put me in that class and make me lower my GPA with it? And I'm like, like, I'm not even a science major. I'm a psychology major. And I'm classing all my psychology classes with flying colors, as they say. But yet, the thing that's bringing me down is science. It's just really annoying. Like, it's one thing if you make it interesting. Cause I passed my science class last year because my professor was funny. He's one of those like foreign people who like kind of just entertain the class. Cause kind of just like, what are you doing? And he knows that we're kind of confused by him, but he uses that to his advantage to kind of teach a lesson. It was kind of like one of those. This lady speaks fluent English, no accent, and still the most boring class I ever seen. How do I understand a, more, a foreign professor better than I understand you? You're from here, no accent. So it's kind of just like, you are just not really good at teaching. That's what I think, and no offense, but I'm just like, girl, 
do better like so show a little spark show a little enthusiasm for your job but anyway i'm gonna finish up my hair finish up getting dressed i still gotta eat and pack my stuff for work i'll show you guys when i'm done the full fit nothing crazy like i said i'm just going to work working with kids so i'm not gonna put on anything crazy but i hope you guys are enjoying the video so far this is not the outro yet but that is coming soon so make sure you guys like and subscribe because you're a reminder so i'll see you guys in a minute all right how does your girl look period i'm really feeling like myself again with my curly hair i'm feeling that girl you already know my hair feels so healthy feels so curly it feels so moisturized because obviously when your hair is in that protective style you gotta make sure you spray it down every day and so i'm really just loving the look i'm loving how the curls are very defined that's why you work on wet hair and you spray it down like i just said so you can keep on reinforcing those curls i'm really loving how it turned out I feel very confident about going to work, going outside, taking pictures because like the first like three days of having twists, I feel good because my hair is like freshly retwisted. But then after a while, it kind of looks a little bit grown out and frizzy and stuff. And then when you have like curly hair and stuff and when you take it out, you can get away with like it not looking like freshly retwisted. I'm really loving that. So next, after I do this, I already got dresses. This is the fit for today, and you guys can't see it all the way, but I also packed my bag. So for work, I usually have my water bottle, my laptop in here, and then maybe like a notebook. I have some pencils and stuff like that, hand sanitizer, lotion, highlighters, just so I can do some of my work if I need to whenever the kids are settled down. I also need to put some snacks in here. But besides that, everything else is provided for me at work, so I don't need to provide any toys or any food or any snacks, obviously for the snacks and stuff like that. But basically, I get to just do my own thing with their own stuff. I don't have to really provide anything. I only bring these things because after a while, the kids might settle down. They might be doing homework or they're going to sleep and I still have like 30 minutes left and I'll basically just sit down and do my own assignments as well. That's gonna conclude today's video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, which is Angel Kyle. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a comment, um, anything that you guys think I should do or any recommendations. But yeah, deuces.